Hey there, so over the last couple of months we did a miniature painting competition here in the Netherlands uh, that was focused on command groups. Um, so the idea was that everyone would get some uh, command group together and um, we would uh, have to paint it. And then um, yeah, we would collect them and be judged on the painting, um, giving a winner a second place, third place, and there would be very small prizes for those, uh, those places. Uh, so I earlier uh, posted a link where you guys could also vote and by the time this video is going to be uh, released um, the voting is going to be to have been done and the winner uh, is going to be known uh, but at the time when I'm reviewing the pictures uh, I don't know the winner yet uh, so I'm just gonna predict uh, try and predict who is gonna uh, win this event um, and just discuss some painting uh, on the individual contestants uh, so we'll just start with the orcs and goblins uh, or with the, the goblin chariots uh, so this is clearly a converted work <laughs> and I, I really like it um, so this is from a guy who has a squick army so his Great Green Idol is a very big squeak, his uh, Wrecking Ball Giant is also I believe a squeak and well basically anything you can put in the army and uh, put it as a squeak in the army is a squeak so the Doom Divers are also just squeaks that are spitting stuff. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a great job um, just for a unit. Um, the only thing uh, that I um, would say that uh, for the painting competition is um, that he put a lot of work into the conversion work which is great but I, I don't know if we should necessarily uh, see it as painting um, so just from a purely painting perspective I don't know if this was the intention of the competition or not uh, but you can see that the chariots for example actually are just um, um, well unpainted <laughs> um, I don't think this uh, is a negative thing for the unit itself it's just in the, the, the eye of the competition um, but the, the squicks that have been painted and the, the goblins they have been painted to, to a good standard and I like the rusty colors on the uh, on the wrecking ball on the um, on the shields on the, the whatever um, yeah I think it's a good job I think it's quite a clean paint also uh, in the sense that there's um, well not a lot of overlap of colors where they shouldn't go and this is one of the, one of the things that I always uh, find is, is a good basis for any good paint job uh, just to work cleanly and one thing I, I sh think I should focus you guys also on is um, so on the top left picture the squick on the bottom right with the, the um, big horn um, so the, the left squick of the rightmost chariot the gradient that you can see in the, the bottom of his jaw uh, that's some, some kind of detail that I'm really drawn to and also these, these teeth that you see some purple um, at the edges of the teeth and then goes uh, strongly too wide but you don't feel like there's uh, just a, a binary gradient basically uh, so I think it's a good job um, I definitely think that this is gonna get uh, quite some votes um, the only thing, yeah, as I already said, I don't know how much uh, of this is actually painting and how much of this uh, just con kit bashing conversion. Uh, but I think it's it's a great entry. It's it, and it's very dynamic for uh, for a cool unit. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to the next one. So these are uh, Sylvan Elves, um, and I believe they're like the uh the Castron. No, the yeah, they are knights. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, they, I don't really know what their role in the army is. Um, I believe they're like the Dark Acolytes of the Dread Elves, but then the, the Sylvan Elf variation. Um, I don't play against Sylvan Elves that often, so I don't really know. Um, so what we can see is uh, that there's a nice free hand on the banner. Um, and, well, the models have been uh, nicely painted. Uh, I especially like the horses in this, uh, in this um, submission. Um, because on the riders I feel like you can uh, quite strongly see the uh, it feels like there's uh, only uh, two colors that been that have been used um, and that it is very clear that uh, this is the case and personally I've I in my experience I find that if you go to a third color uh, for your gradient uh, you don't have to put in a lot more effort but it really kicks up the value of your uh, um, of your paint job 
Um, we will also see that at my submission, um, I generally only use three colors in any gradient that I um, that I make, um, except for uh, characters. Um, so we'll get to that later. And I do like the staff that uh, the champion uh, model has. Uh, yeah, it's it's a nice uh, group, and it's gonna look good in a unit. Um, and probably if you if you get a full army painted in this style, then it's it's gonna look kick ass on the table also. Uh, so let's go to the next one. So this is uh, done by a person who's very much into uh, heavy metal, <laughs> and all of his banners. I think the brightness on this picture that I put here is maybe a bit too high, but all of the banners um, reference a heavy metal album. So I challenge you guys to uh, to find out which heavy metal album uh, this is. Um, me myself, I'm not that much into heavy metal, so I I often see the reference in our group chat, and then I'm go like, yeah, okay, sure, <laughs> could be that band, yeah, fine. Um, I think it's uh, yeah, the, it's nice to to have a, a difference in color between the the lower bodies of the dragon ogres and the upper bodies, um, and some time ago, uh, like um, I'm also look, watching this uh, Trapped Under Plastic podcast uh, from the guy from uh, uh, Miniac. So he does this uh, miniature painting a lot, and he has his YouTube channel. And now he started a um, a, uh, a podcast. Um, and there they also discussed a model that um, that has like the same anatomy as a dragon ogre in the sense that it's kind of a normal beast at the bottom part and then on the top you have like this this monstrous kind of um, thing going on um, and they were talking about how it's really nice to gen just have a bottom that feels na very natural and then the top that that really um, contrasts the top uh, to the bottom uh, to make a very much more uh, horror kind of scene um, you could see the same a little bit in the, the champion model where you from the bottom it, it seems like well you could have a creature that um, has this kind of uh, blend of colors so it's not really natural but it, it's going there and then at the top you're kind of horrified by <laughs> what's on on top of the creature or on the top part of the creature yeah um, yeah, it's a nice unit uh, together. Um, the funny thing is that with big models like this, this is already also just a full unit possibly. Um, I, I like it, but I do think that uh, well, the paint job itself is maybe a little bit messy, so probably it, it won't get into the top three. But still, it's it's a nice unit, and I hope to see it on the table very soon. <laughs> So the next entry are uh, Zomblins, or Zombie Goblins. Um, I believe they're going to be part of a Vampire Covenant army. And, well, they look yeah, very good, especially for zombies. Uh, so there's a nice, a very nice free hand on the banner there. Um, and, yeah, I think it, it really suits uh, Goblins generally uh, very well. Um, so the free hand could have had maybe a little bit more of, of Vampire Covenant influence, but I think it's... It's a really kick-ass banner, of course. Uh, it's it's always difficult to make uh, Vampire Covenant uh, just core troops um, stand out, um, unless you use very bright colors. But then your unit, your army is gonna kind of fluoresce and <laughs> cause people's eyes to burn. Uh, so I do think that for the mini painting competition, um, it's yeah. Uh, a lot of time has been spent on the banner, that's that's very nice to see. Um, but the champion and the musician model, they yeah, they don't really pop to me. Um, but they, even though they have been uh, uh, painted uh, quite well, um, and I do like the, the kind of detail that you can see on the musician um, with the blocked uh, rim on the edge of the of the hood and of the the cape. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, mini painting competition, I think this is not going to be one of the, the higher scoring ones, just because the models themselves, uh, they are quite bland, but that is mostly inevitable for uh, for zombie um, models. Uh, so even though it's it's quite a good paint job, um, I think it's going to end up in the middle of the, of the crowd. The next one. 
Uh, so these are beastmen uh, horns, <laughs> wild horns, I think that they're called. Uh, so you can directly see that uh, quite a lot of effort has been put into these models. Um, so yeah, this uh, the, uh, the person who painted this army was um, during the competition uh, convinced to um, to put a tartan kind of. Uh, print on his models um, and now I don't know if he's uh, going for it for the full army but I believe it's gonna take quite some time <laughs> so I'm also doing this kind of stuff for my uh, for my dread elves actually um, where I have this blocked uh, gray uh, black pattern uh, or white black white gray uh, pattern popping up uh, everywhere and it really blends the army together if you do it everywhere so that is a very very nice thing to have in your army and i think it also really suits uh, the beastmen uh, pretty well um and i think that the models themselves apart from the tartan they have been uh, painted to a good standard and also with some details such like the pumpkin on the base and um also the, the bagpipe i believe has been handcrafted too so this is this is definitely an impressive uh, entry I do have one uh, critique though, and that is uh, the banner. Um, I th yeah, I, I'm not really convinced by it because I, I don't really see what kind of pattern should be on the banner. Um, I, I can't really relate to its uh, symbols. And it looks like it's uh, been a messy end of a great and awesome paint job. Um, so I, I do think that this is going to end up in the top three. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily, well, maybe it's going to be top one. It could also be just the number one. Um, but I, well, personally, I haven't voted it as number one. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. So another uh, Beastman uh, Longhorn unit this time, I believe. And this also, uh, yeah, to me this looks amazing. I, I never can pull it off to take s to get such a natural look on uh, my models, um, ranging from the basing to the models themselves. Uh, so it seems like this is a bit more of a simple uh, paint style than the previous entry, um, but I actually prefer this one. Um, so I'm just amazed by how how with it seems like with um, less effort than the previous entry uh, I'm <laughs> I'm not going to judge here on, on effort but um, how with less effort than the previous entry this entry uh, captures more uh, effectively just the natural look of uh, Beastman which is, I think for Beastman is very important but then again to make your army pop and look natural at the same time, that is incredibly difficult. Um, so the one thing that that, um, that uh, really got me excited about this entry is uh, the rightmost picture where you can see the zoom on the banner. And then actually not the banner, well the banner itself is also uh, well, well done, uh, but just this skull on the top. Uh, you can see that the, the detail in there is it's just such a sharp, clean uh, paint job that it, um, I believe it makes it look so natural that you don't even uh, see it if you just look at the unit. Because you just accept it to be a skull rather than something that has been painted. So I believe, I, I don't know if I voted number one on this one, um, but uh, I believe this is definitely in my top three. And I hope that this is going to end up um, quite high indeed. Uh, so the next one, uh, so these are, well, they are for Demon Legions, and I believe they're the fast-moving guys, uh, the, boo, what are they, I, well, I'm lost with the name, but you probably know. <laughs> so, well, they're Demon Legion models, so they could be anything after all, anyway. Um, yeah, they are very colorful, uh, and, yeah, they, they combine some, some, so whenever you're painting any models, um, I always try to to, um, to get some inspiration from the color wheel. And 
where demons you can forgo this and, and get some weird contrasts going on. So that is also what I believe happened here, where you have this very cold ice blue, uh, the cold tone of purple, and then you mix it with a uh, quite uh, fiery and, and full red. So you get a lot of, of contrast within the miniature itself. Um, and I think that the, the painting itself has been done to a, to a good standard. Um, and just, yeah, it's it's demons. It, it is supposed to, to look a little bit weird. <laughs> and to me, this definitely uh, makes me feel a bit weird about whether this is a good uh, paint job. Because technically, it's a good paint job. Um, that's well you can see just the colors have been nicely painted uh, the separation between colors is good um, there's no overlap that's uh, to say and yeah the, the, the models they, they do stand out the bases are, are um, well supplied I'm just not sure about the color choice um, so to me this this yeah this doesn't really uh, pop in the sense that I'm, I'm really convinced that um, they are awesome looking models uh, but that's probably just personal preference uh, one thing would be to maybe include more uh, contrast between light and dark um, to make the, the areas of the models that you want to have your viewer focus on pop a bit more but then again, it's a it's a great paint job. Um, I'm I'm just not convinced by it. <laughs> Next one. Uh, so this is actually mine. <clears throat> so as I alluded to earlier, I am going to talk a little bit about the gradients. Uh, so you can see that uh, well, it's mostly the blue uh, that I uh, well, it's only the blue that I put a gradient in in this unit. So my entire army is going to look uh, kind of similar to this, uh, with a very stark blue uh, to white gradient well nearly white gradient and with some gold uh, eroded uh, elements um, and then the rest of the army is mostly going to be metallic um, and yeah I'm going to put some focus points um, in some uh, other models like the characters they're gonna have some probably some beige um, <laughs> and beige doesn't sound like the most exciting color but against this blue it, it kind of works uh, yeah, so I uh, did, this is one of my first attempts at freehanding uh, banners. So I decided to start with something that is I, I've painted like five banners by now. Um, so I'm still constraining myself to something kind of simple, just a, a kind of dark grill kind of idea. Um, so I found it very um, very effective uh, for light effects in your banners to just make this this light area. And a star gradient and then contrast it with something that um, is intrinsically dark uh, so yeah hence the idea for the beaker and then we have a, a squid or an octopus um, on the back of the cape of the champion because well this was a big surface to cover otherwise and i thought it uh, would look uh, cool uh, so if you have any uh, critiques of co or comments uh, please let me know for now we'll just uh, go on to the next one so yeah all these these blue gradients they're just the dark blue the, the um, kind of cyan blue and then the cyan white mixed together and I think we can agree that this third um, uh, component in your gradient really makes the unit pop instead of um, being it being two colors basically so the next entry, they are dwarves. Um, so <laughs> little guys, so kind of a little paint job, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that it's uh, more easy to paint than um, than the bigger models. Um, like some people would say that if you have bigger models, then it's uh, more difficult to do a paint job um, because you have more surface to cover. On the other hand, for the smaller models, um, everything has to be right because well, people are going to gonna look uh, up close um, to the models. Uh, so here you can see that, um, yes, indeed, the, the zoom level on these models is quite high. Um, and you can see that it's also, a, yeah, a really clean uh, paint job. And that, that is what attracts me to these models um, quite a bit. I, I like them, uh, yeah, a lot, really. Uh, so... Yeah, they, they are really cleanly painted. Um, 
so you have uh, without using uh, washes I think you have uh, these these very slight gradients near the edge of um, of the hammer on the musician on his back for example and on the, the musician's horn um, and also on the shield of the champion you, you see that there's some variation in color in the blue um, and also these these faces on the right they have been uh, painted to to a good standard um, yeah so I think this is also a, a very good contestant but it might be overlooked by a couple of by a lot of people just because they're uh, three dwarves <laughs> yeah so let's go to the next one. So these are the, the models uh, from the Long Drong Slayer pirate set. Um, yeah, as you can see, Long Drong brought his slayers to the party, and uh, they have been painted in a very, very, very good uh, way, in a very high standard. Um, yeah, I think these models are an absolute blast, and it's difficult to, uh, like in a command group um, competition, I would say that these two dwarf uh, entries, they are very daring entries because they both had uh, banners that have been pre-sculpted so you cannot do any fancy uh, stuff with the banner uh, itself in the form of uh, free hands or anything. Um, and you only have three small models that you can use for your competition basically. Like um, if you compare it to the, the bigger models that we have seen like the chariots and, uh, and the dragon ogres you have to put all of your effort into these uh, small models and make the uh, other people co convinced to uh, that you actually uh, did the best job here uh, yeah i think they have been uh, beautifully painted um, because there's also this the, the, the hair that they have seems uh, very natural um, so i think this has been done with quite some small brush strokes um, and I really like them, yeah, I really do. Uh, I like the details, like the skull on the, the cap of the musician, the pattern on the cap of the standard bearer. Um, and I think it's a really good job. So the next entry are the Knights of the Sun Griffin uh, of the Empire of Sunstyle. Um, and we have a couple of uh, picks of the command group and we also have a couple of picks of the uh, command group in the unit as a whole. Um, so yeah, the black and yellow um, paint scheme really works for the Empire, I find. And I must say, I have my own pink, um, black kind of painted Empire army, and it looks a bit worse than this. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's a uh, it's a nice paint job. I do find it a bit of a sad aspect that we don't have uh, good zooms of, um, for example, the face of the musician and um, the other um, command pieces um, and the banner I, I really like the rim of the banner with the yellow and the black but I, it's a bit of a shame that there's uh, no uh, interior decoration uh, to the black part of the uh, of the banner otherwise the models are uh, painted to a good standard um, so the griffins I, I uh, like um, what I believe has been done by uh, just dry brushing them um and yeah for the unit as a whole i could have imagined that you um would have wanted to have some diversity in the skin tones of the griffins um but well technically that's uh, not really a, any critique at all and i only see now that the the actually the the um what are they called uh, so the the pieces of fabric that connect the mouth of the griffin uh, to the rider's hands uh, they've also been um paid a little bit extra attention to by giving them a yellow brim that uh, corresponds um, or that is in line with the um, with the yellow on the banner. I think it's a decent paint job um, but I don't think it's gonna end up in the top three at the end however. Uh, so then the next one is also Empire. Um, so I believe these are great swords and um, yeah they are painted uh, to a uh, well just to the standard that a lot of uh, stuff on the tabletop is actually uh, painted to uh, with just the base colors and a dip um, and then well the, ba the bases still seem to um, be unfinished so I think for the competition it's not gonna win um, but maybe it, it was just um, a motivation for this person to, to get his models uh, painted 
Um, I'll, I'll just skip over to the next one. So the next one is Highborn Elf Queen's Guard. Um, so as you can see, uh, also some other members of the unit uh, have been painted by now. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a cool unit. You don't see it that often on the field. Um, and yeah, this um, command group has been painted uh, with a lot of effort. Um, so with regards to, to cleanliness of paint, paint jobs, I would say that uh, this could still uh, be a little bit cleaner. Um, so yeah, that, I believe it's it's mostly um, white, whites are difficult to do um, if you're um, if you're just uh, starting out painting anyway. Yeah, and the reason for that is that uh, normally um, you would have to thin your paints um, to have good control over them, and I feel that um, yeah, if you if you thin your paints down uh, to the right. Uh, thickness then that you have good control over them then you lose a little bit of your pigment in your paint um, then for the whites you would have to do several layers um, in order to get a good paint job uh, so that means that either you have to do multiple paint jobs or you are gonna be a bit more messy in your paint jobs and I feel like uh, that is uh, also what happened here so I have the feeling that at some points you can um, see that um, the place where the paint actually ended up was not really the place where it was intended to go um, and you can well you can mostly see it on the banner I believe um, but yeah that's also just a, a matter of, uh, of, of practice and um, well practice makes perfect right and also these models they <laughs> they're still quite demanding for just infantry models because they have gems all over and they have details all over and if you really want to paint all these details uh, then you're indeed going to spend a lot of time um, on these models so i think in terms of amount of effort that has been paid to the models this is definitely one of the top contenders um but in terms of uh, awesome paint job i would say that there's uh, alternative uh, submissions that are uh, better so by the time of publishing the painting competition is at an end and it's already uh, known who is the winner of the competition uh, which is the goblin wolf uh, chariot unit um, well the squick chariot unit um, and it's an amazing looking unit so i can definitely understand that this is uh, the winner of the competition uh, second place actually um, was for me so i was very ha happy with this um, and yeah, I, I, I really was, was very happy because I, I saw that a lot of people also uh, submitted some, some stuff that went beyond just a couple of infantry guys. And I was a bit concerned um, um, that my three infantry guys would just not be enough to, to, um, to rank high enough. Uh, but apparently people uh, really liked my work. Um, and then third place goes uh, to the uh, Tartan um, dressed beastmen which i also thought were a very good contender um well all in all the, i believe that there has been a lot of uh, good stuff around um but i'm i'm really happy with my uh, second place obviously so um well see you in the next video